Yo everyone, the June and July posts have both simultaneously dropped for SCPSL, and I gotta say, these are pretty juicy if you're a visual learner like myself. So sit down, grab yourself a nice cold glass of water, and let's get into things. Starting off with the June post, we're talking more about the Revolver rework. Northwood states that while the current version of the Revolver can be used well in the right hands, the weapon is deemed too odd for the general player base, which is the nice way of saying... SKILL ISSUE! To combat the issue, Mikkel decided to redesign the revolver from the ground up to be more powerful and versatile. This new revolver is based off the real-life Taurus Raging Judge model. Hopefully I pronounced that right. This revolver is more modern, being able to chamber 454 rounds, but also 410 shotgun shells. These different ammo types are translated to the game through attachments, not actually requiring you to pick up different ammo types, just the changing of your cylinder. There's the classic 6-shot cylinder, a 5-shot cylinder that uses AP rounds for higher penetration, and a 7-shot cylinder that uses the previously mentioned 410 shotgun rounds. There will also be the option to have a flashlight on the grip of the revolver, as currently, it's the only gun in the game to lack a flashlight. There's also been some changes to how the revolver and its ammo spawns. Firstly, Chaos Marauders will now spawn with 30 bullets for the revolver instead of 24. Secondly, and more importantly, the revolver will now have a guaranteed spawn in the facility. It will either spawn next to the dead guard in 096's chamber, or in SCP-106's chamber. Of course, there will also be some ammo next to it so you can actually use the thing. Alongside the sick animations you've probably been looking at, there's actually a new system with the revolver mechanically. With the weapon rework, this system can actually track each chamber separately, knowing which chamber is empty, loaded with a live bullet, or containing a discharged cartridge. They've also added the ability to spin the revolver by holding the cocking button. So yes, Russian Roulette will finally be possible in SCPSL. Northwood has listed a bunch of stats for the new revolver as well, but since these are most likely going to be changed by the final version, and it would bloat this video's runtime if I read everything, I'll just provide a handy dandy screenshot for you if you're curious. To wrap up the June post, we got a few screenshots showing off the new heavy containment zone. It should be noted that all of these screenshots are in the first art phase, so things are subject to change. Along with these screenshots, we got a Q&A with some of the devs on their thoughts about the whole project. If you want to read all the questions and answers, I'd recommend checking out the post for yourself, as I'm just going to highlight the most important ones. Are you guys interested in doing this to other zones in the future? We are definitely interested in reworking other zones. HCZ is a key factor for future projects as it requires a lot of props, trim sheets, and lighting experimentation. By handling this zone first we've considerably reduced the amount of time and work required for the next tasks. Was there any specific area you thought needed to change more than others? 106's containment cell. It looks severely outdated. Were there any areas that you believe needed prioritization? The main hallways, as they are the most common. I think there's going to be a lot of less is more going on for those rooms. We want them to look cool, but not saturate them with information since they appear the most frequently. Which part of Heavy did you dislike the most? HCZ corridor shapes. Absolute nonsense to have octagonal shapes for concrete walls. Worst part is cleaning the room's assets. It's a pain, and it takes time to fix polygons and UVs, which is what took most of our time. In fact, many rooms now use far fewer shaders and polygons, and are of higher quality than many other assets found in the gaming industry. So, I was the person who suggested changing the staircase in the server room to the other side, as I thought that not only could it help prevent more rubber banding, but it would also encourage more use of the room by forcing the player to walk across the whole length. We now move on to the July post, which gives us a full look at all the new human models including the facility guard's unmasked face. To go with these images, we also have another Q&A to go through. Again, I'll be going through the most important points, so if you want the full thing, feel free to check out the post. Going into the project, were there any personal goals you set for yourself? The goal was to get the character models to a higher standard of quality, give them a distinct look, and increase the amount of animations. Who did you work alongside for this project? I worked alone when it came to the design and execution. I did receive some feedback from the studio staff which ultimately ended up changing some elements of the models, most notably, the guard's vest was supposed to be a light blue instead of the final dark blue. The implementation process is mostly being done by Hubert, as I limited myself to setting up the models and materials into Unity, he then worked on implementing animations and new features. What can you tell us about your rework of animations as a whole? I tried to give quantity and quality with this one, starting from scratch, 
remaking all the existing animations, and also adding all of those missing interactions, like using items or jumping while running. It was hard, full body animations require a lot more experience than FPS animations, so I had to adjust animations over and over, as I would spot unrealistic movements every time I would revisit an animation after a bit of time had passed, especially with the running animations. I hope the result was worth it and that people will enjoy these new animations more than the previous ones. And there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and all this cool new stuff. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, feel free to comment. And either way, you should subscribe. Thanks, and have a nice day.